Hello, hello. Are you ready to learn some English? I hope so. You might have been wondering where I was. I wasn't in the chat before this lesson but uh, I was talking to Jen. I lost track of time. We'll start in about 27 seconds once I confirm that everything is working properly. It's nice to see some familiar names in the chat. Looks like everything is working properly. We'll start in about 10 seconds. Awesome. That makes me happy when everything is working properly. Um well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about using things. I will admit this is a really bad title for a lesson an English lesson that's filled with some very common words that you do need to know. I just couldn't think about a good title for what to call it but the other day I ejected a DVD. Yes, I was still using a DVD player. I ejected a DVD. I put something up. I propped something up. I hooked something up. I stacked some things and I thought all of these words make a good lesson. A lesson I guess about describing the actions of using things. Maybe that's a better title. Anyways, welcome to this English lesson. Um I hope that you enjoy it. We're going to talk about describing using things. Hopefully, that makes sense. Before we get started, I do wanna say hi. I apologize for not being here earlier in the chat. Normally, I'm here and chatting with people. So, hi to Hafiez, Vitor, Lolly Lolly, Chris, 74, Valadislav, Wanda Prado, Yaroslav, Taras. I need my glasses. Here we go. Why am I in a good mood? I don't have to teach today. I love teaching but I don't have to go. I don't have to go to school. I do have to go to work but um Matthias, Kevin, um Joseph, Gabriella, uh Zachariah, Huri, Luigi, Rabia, Judith is here. Hi, Judith. Mode eggs. Hey, hey. How's everything going? It's nice to be able to relax with this live stream at the end of the week. My week. Yes, end of the week for you. Uh let's see here. Scroll back. Scroll down. Gion, Kakachen and everyone else who is here. Welcome. Hey, we're gonna talk about um mostly verbs. I think they're all verbs. Verbs to describe the actions of using different things. If if that doesn't make sense, maybe I should just jump to the first slide. Remember during the live stream, if you have a question, uh please follow the link in the chat. Uh don't ask questions in the chat. I won't get to them. Uh please have some English conversations with each other in the chat. It's a it's a perfect opportunity to practice your English and there's no um like there's no stress. No one knows who you are really. We just know your name. Um it's a good time to practice typing a few English conversations. So, please do that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. There we go. Am I still focusing? Yeah. Okay. Um let's start. I think we should start. I think everything's working. Uh members, remember if you do exclamation mark link, the link will pop up for the form. If some of you don't mind doing that every once in a while, um that will help people to be able to ask questions. So, here we go. Extend. So, when you extend something, it means that it's in a state of either being folded up or wrapped up or rolled up and then extend is when you put it out. On this camper, there is an awning and when the person stopped, they extended the awning, okay? I'm using the past tense. So, when you extend something, it means it kind of goes out. I wouldn't use this for an umbrella like you open an umbrella but you definitely extend an awning. Maybe on your balcony, you have an awning that um rolls up. There's another word for you and maybe you can crank it. There's another word in order to extend the awning. Um but yes, when you extend something, you move it from a you know packed up state to being out and usable. I do not own a motorhome like this. <laughs> I I have a tent. I don't I don't have a motorhome. I don't have a camper trailer. Um oh, hey, just a sec. I have to check something here. Um where is Sorry to delay the lesson briefly. 
I'm kind of a creature of habit. So, if I don't have my Fitbit and my wedding ring on, then I don't feel like I'm ready for my day. So, I had just noticed my wedding ring was off. Retract. Hey, when you go on an airplane, after the airplane takes off, they retract the landing gear. So, retract is actually the opposite of extend. Um they extend the landing gear before they land and then they retract the landing gear. When you retract something, it goes back into the spot where it is stored, okay? So, the wheels on an airplane, they retract into the bottom of the airplane. Um sometimes in movies, they'll have an emergency because the plane, they can't retract the landing gear. The wheels are stuck down and apparently, that's a problem. I don't know a lot about aviation. Stack. So, here's a simple one. There are many things in the world that you can stack. When you stack things, you put one on top of another. At school, uh when we meet as an entire school in the gym, when we're done, we stack the chairs. In order to put the chairs away in the closet where they go, we stack the chairs so they take up less space. There's many things that you can stack. You stack the plates in your cupboard. You might stack cups. You might stack bowls. <coughs> Sorry, I had this a couple of weeks ago too. I don't know why five minutes into the lesson, I suddenly cough rudely. <clears throat> Let me stop that for a second. Uh you might stack bowls. You might stack cups. You can stack spoons um but when you stack things, it's when you put things either inside each other or on top of each other like these chairs here. Insert. So, we all do this. I think I've lost my keys but sometimes you insert your key into the door, into the lock in order to unlock the door. Um this pen has a cap. I can insert the tip of the pen into the cap, okay? Um so, whenever you have a thing that needs to go inside of another thing, the verb we use to describe that action is to insert. When I was a kid, I used to go to the arcade and I would insert coins into the video game machine in order to play the video game. So, when you put things into something else, we often use the verb insert. When I'm frustrated, sometimes I do this. Sometimes, I take a piece of paper. What's this piece of paper? It's a comment from another video. If I was done with this piece of paper or if I was frustrated, I might crumple the piece of paper. So, this piece of paper is now crumpled. I might crumple it before I throw it into the recycle bin. Um you can just put paper in the recycle bin flat but sometimes it's more fun to crumple the paper and then throw it. Students really like doing that. They like to crumple the paper and they like to throw it into the recycle bin or at each other. So, this is how this lesson uh came to be. I was using a DVD player which is rare. (laughs) Often uh in this world, you just watch something on your computer but uh, I have an older movie that I show in French class and I needed to play it from a DVD player. So, I put the DVD in and then when I was done, I hit the eject button and I ejected. Sorry, I said eject. We actually it's it's not a long e. It's eject. I hit the eject button. Don't say eject. That's wrong. I try not to say words wrong. Hit the eject button and then the DVD came out of the DVD player. So, when you have when I was a kid, um we could play cassette tapes in the radio in our car and then if you hit eject, it would come out. So, it's the button you push to make something come out. Um I'm trying to think if there's a modern day. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, on a computer, if you are done using something, you right click and eject it. So, it's like a safe way to remove an SD card or something like that. Rearrange. Do you ever get a little bit bored of a room in your house? Like, do you ever look at it and think, oh, I should put that chair over there and I should move that uh file cabinet over there. We call this rearranging. When you rearrange a room, you put things in different spots. Maybe uh you look at your kitchen counter and you think, oh, I should put the toaster over there and I should put the microwave over there and then maybe I'll move the coffee maker to 
the side of the sink. I think I'm going to rearrange the things on my counter. So, when you rearrange, you put things either in a room or on a counter or on a shelf. You put things in different spots. You rearrange. It's good to do that. I think a lot of Canadians do that in the middle of the winter because we're in our houses so much. Eventually, we think, hmm, I should rearrange some things here. Clamp. So, I think I talked about this verb in another lesson um but in this lesson, I wanna talk about things like this light. This person bought a light that they could clamp onto their desk. If you look at the bottom there where the light is connected to the desk, I think it slid on and there's probably something to turn. This is my clamp. So, as I turn, the clamp gets tighter, okay? Um when I was in university, I had a lamp that would clamp onto my I had it on the headboard of my bed so I could read at night. I'm trying to think if I have other things right now. Oh, I have a mic that clamps on to my uh tripod. Uh that's another use of the verb clamp but it simply means to attach something with something we call a clamp, something that has a spring or something that you turn and tighten to clamp. Hey, we're gonna jump to questions. I think I'm a little long winded today but let's uh let's start with some questions. Uh let me see if I can find the first one from Renata. Good morning, Bob. Um anyways, let me get to the next one. From Hung, I use ruler calculator and area formulas to measure the area of my school. Measure is a word I'm going to talk about. What things do you use to measure the area of your farm? Do you use ruler and calculator? Thanks. So, we use a couple things. Um we have a wheel that is exactly a meter. So, as you drive it, it clicks and you count the clicks to know how many meters. Um we have a really long measuring tape. We have a hundred meter measuring tape. Uh and then we also use GPS a lot or Google Maps, sorry. We use satellite imagery on the internet sometimes to check things. So, a few different things that we use uh to measure. Uh let's see. From Judith. Hi, Bob. What is the most important point if you get something to use it? Practicality, usefulness, value, color, shape, being able to enjoy it. For me, it's usefulness and I think this is depending on the person you ask. For me, almost everything I buy, I buy because I need to solve a problem and that thing solves the problem. So, if there's flies, I buy fly swatters. Um if I don't have enough cups, I buy cups. For me, price and usefulness are the two deciding factors. That's how we would say it in English. Yaroslav says, morning the wisest teacher Bob. Hope you are doing great. I am. No question today. Just wish you a cool day and warm weekend ahead. It is warm here. Last night, I was out walking at eight o'clock at night and it was 19 degrees Celsius. That's rare. I was wearing shorts on October 26th. That is a rare a, a rare occasion. From Eric, good evening, teacher Bob. Greetings from Japan. What are the things that you could live without and things you can't? Thank you for the lesson. Yeah, I've answered this a couple different ways. I usually say I can't live without my phone. Let me come up with a different answer. Okay, a few years ago, we had an ice storm and we didn't have electricity for three days. And that was really hard. Um we did have a generator but we didn't have enough gas. Um I could not live without electricity. Um to me, that is probably one of the most important things. Electricity just makes everything else work well. Okay, from Tanya. Hi, Bob. I hope you're doing well. Is it common to use the word extend or extension when you want to continue a contract that is actually limited to one year? Thanks. Yes. So, let's say you contracted me for a year to teach at your school and you're really happy with the work I'm doing. You might say, Bob, we want to extend your contract another year. We want to make it one year longer or you might say, we want to give you an extension on your contract, okay? Um and then uh just make sure with extension, it's with an S, not a T. So, that's the that's the only thing I would say there. 
So if you look at the word extension, it's not T-I-O-N, it's S-I-O-N. But yeah, great question, Tanya. Uh let's see here. I'm just looking at the chat a little bit. I like to see what the Bobbies are talking about. Kakachen says, never see a MacBook with DVD. They I think there were some. If you got a MacBook Pro with a large screen, I think you could. And then Vitor, modern computers don't have that thing anymore to eject. No, my computer for some reason uh came you can't really see it. It's kind of dark there but it came with a DVD player still and I I don't think I've ever put a DVD in it or pushed the eject button. Should I go push it for a sec? I I just think go. Oh. Does work but uh so this is my uh this is how I move around in my chair. Um but yes, pretty rare now for things to have an eject button. Um here we go. Hook up. So, I think we talked about that these are called hitches. There's a hitch that you use to hook up. So, my son has a truck and a trailer. When he comes to get his trailer, he hooks up his trailer. When you hook something up, usually we're talking about cars and trailers or tractors and wagons. You hook one up to the other. If you see a large transport truck on the road, it has a trailer. When he goes to the yard, he might unhook the trailer and then hook up the trailer, okay? So, it's when you connect something to something else used primarily to talk about vehicles. Although, yeah, you can hook up equipment too. Um and you might be wondering why not just use the word hook? We don't. You you always hook up a trailer. Um let me see. I'm gonna hook a trailer to my car. Yeah, you can say that but I would say hook up is probably more common. Um we have rip off and tear off. You've probably seen posters like this around your town sometimes. Even though people usually sell things on the internet, you might still see these. It might say like concert this week. Um free concert and then down here they'll have the address or this guy is selling a driveway cleaning service. So, he might have little pieces of paper that you can rip off or tear off. So, if you're like, oh, I need my driveway clean, you might tear off his name and phone number so that you can give that person a call and they can come and do that for you. Um to pin. So, if you have a bulletin board or if you have a cork board and you have um pins or push pins, you might pin something to the board. If you use Pinterest online, you might pin something to your Pinterest uh board as well. But we have these in our classrooms. We have a board in our kitchen and if there's something important, we will pin it to the board so that we will remember it. I think right now, my next dentist appointment is pinned to the board in our kitchen. So, that way I can see it when I walk by and hopefully not forget to go. So, in the chat, people are saying unhook or hook off. It's definitely unhook. So, you would hook up a trailer and then you would unhook a trailer. There is no hook off in English. Nope. Sounds kind of funny when I say that. It's it's like a funny sounding phrasal verb that doesn't exist. So, you would unhook the trailer definitely. Uh let's see. Two says, so we can hook up a phone to a screen at school. Yes, you can hook up your computer to a TV. You can hook up your computer to a projector. Definitely, yep, you would use the verb for that as well. Um Yaroslav says, hook not or hook no. You would just not either hook up or not hook up. That would be the two choices there. Fold up. Uh we have tables where the legs will fold. And so, we set the table up but when we're done, we fold up the table. When we go to market, we have folding tables that you can. So, we don't often unfold the table just so you know. We would set up the table and then at the end of market, we would fold up the table. The legs fold into the bottom. The table itself actually folds in half and then you have a nice compact way to carry it. So, again, if you have folding tables, you would set up the table. When you're done using it, you would fold up the table and you would put it away. Unfold. 
So, we don't have strollers anymore but we used to. Uh often when you have a stroller, it will fold up and then you can unfold it. So, notice with the table, I didn't use unfold and I wouldn't. It sounds like a strange way but with a stroller, you know, the little thing you push your kid or baby around in, I would use unfold. You fold up the stroller and put it in your car and then you take it out and unfold it. So, when something is you know in a smaller form and it's designed to kind of do this, we would use the verb unfold. You would unfold the stroller. I don't miss folding and unfolding strollers. That was our I think the newer ones work better but uh definitely uh yeah. You know what I don't I miss having little kids because it was a lot of fun having little kids but I don't miss all of the stuff like the diaper bag and the stroller and everything you had to carry with you just to go somewhere. That was a little bit cumbersome. Prop up. So, this is I think it's a Microsoft Surface and you can see that you see the little back part that's out holding up the screen. Let me see if I can mimic this. I can't get my angles right. So, the part that's holding up the screen at the back. We would say that you're using that to prop up the laptop. Anytime you use something to kind of hold something else up a little bit, we use the verb to prop up. You can use prop as well but prop up is probably more common. If your fence was falling over in the backyard, you might push it straight and then put a board to prop up the fence. So, it's something you use to hold something else up. Often when I sit down at the kitchen table at lunch, I might set down my phone and I might use a book to prop up my phone so that it's so I can see it, right? So, you might have your phone and if you lay it flat, it's hard to see but if you um like I could put my pen under to prop it up on the table and then I can see it to prop up. To put up. So, this is a pretty general use verb. Um you can put up blinds. You can put up curtains. You can uh put up things on your walls. You can put things up on shelves. So, anytime you're putting something up, that's not a good way to define it. Anytime you're attaching something to the wall um or you're uh doing what this person's doing, you know, reaching up to hang something, we the general term would be to put up. You can put up wallpaper. Um you wouldn't put up paint. That doesn't make sense um but you can uh put your groceries up on the top shelf, right? You can put up curtains. You can put up blinds, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I think I'm repeating myself on put up. Take down. Kind of the opposite of put up. Oh, by the way, you can put up a tent as well. This guy I think is going to take down the tent. Um but when he got to the campground, I'm pretty sure that he would have put up his tent. You can use set up as well with the tent but when you're done camping, you take down your tent. So, a tent when it's up can collapse and fold and you can roll it up. The whole all of those actions, we would use the verb to take down. So, not the funnest part of camping but when you're done camping, you will take down your tent. Um and again, you can use this for things on the wall. I'm gonna take down that painting. Um I'm gonna put up some posters or I'm gonna take down my posters before I move out. So, the action of putting things up and down. Unfurl. Not used a lot anymore. You can unfurl a sail. You can unfurl a flag as well. So, when you have something like a fabric that's rolled up you can unfurl it and I think those are probably like when you pull the cord on a parachute, the parachute will unfurl above you. You might use it then but definitely you would use it if you go on a little sailing adventure. You would unfurl the sail. So, the sail's rolled up. You would unfurl it before you go. I'm trying to think of another thing that you might unfurl. Yeah. Basically, any kind of fabric that's rolled up if you unroll it, you might use the verb unfurl. Let's see here. Collapse. 
So, some things are meant to collapse. This this verb has a lot of meanings but when you do the action of collapsing something, it means that you are putting it into a smaller form. We have dog crates and we can collapse them. They're built so that if we want to um put them flat, you can collapse it. Um I'm trying to think of another example. Um some people have I'm trying to think. Like at market when we're done using our canopy, sometimes we say it's time to take down the canopy but sometimes we just say let's collapse the canopy. So, it's to make something into a smaller form. Wind up. When you're done using an extension cord, uh it's always a good idea to wind up the cord. Now, notice this looks a lot like the word wind. So, it's one of those words that has two meanings and two pronunciations but when I'm done doing my live stream outside on Saturdays, I wind up my network cable and then I wind up my extension cord um because believe it or not, I do have to use electricity out there. I think I got that fly. Not a hundred percent sure. Um you do like it when I just do normal English speaking life things like try to swat flies. This is a fly swatter. You use it to swat. That wasn't part of the lesson but now you know. I tried to swat a fly. I think I missed it but anyways. To unwind. Well, the opposite of wind is to unwind. When you go to use your garden hose, if it is wound up like this, you pull it and it will unwind as you pull it. When you're flying a kite, as the kite goes higher, the string will unwind as you're flying the kite. Uh and then same with an extension cord. You will if I needed to vacuum my van, I would unwind an extension cord um in order to have electricity by my fan. Crank. Some windows slide open. This is actually a patio door but some have a little crank. I should have zoomed in a little bit more on this. When you crank, there's usually like a little handle or lever on something and you turn it. These windows here, when I do my live stream, I unlatch the latches and then I crank the thing and then the window opens and then I throw my extension cord out the window. Um so, when you crank something, it means you turn it. Back to the beginning of the lesson, when you extend an awning, you probably crank something. There's probably like a little thing that you crank and then the awning will extend. So, to crank means to turn something with a little handle. We also use this to talk about like extreme turning with a steering wheel like you crank the wheel. Sometimes when you're driving, if something like let's say a dog runs out in front of you, you might crank the wheel so that you don't have an accident. Hey, we're gonna do members only chat. I'm gonna have a sip of water for a sec. I'm sorry if I'm talking too quickly today. Um I feel like I'm quite energetic. Um if you're wondering why, we have two days of professional development. So, I don't teach today. I do have to work but I don't teach today. Um and there's something what did what do they say? Like a change can be as good as a break, right? Like doing something different at work for the day can be just as enjoyable as not working or as in not as enjoyable but almost the same. Uh let's see here. Let me get members only chat turned on. Let me thank my members. If you don't know what I'm talking about, members are people who uh there's a small subscription fee. They get their name in blue, an extra lesson on Wednesdays, a week at a glance. I tried to respond to members comments but for four weeks, I haven't been. So, but that will start happening again. I actually started uh, yesterday working my way through. I do love reading members comments. Um and uh during live streams you get your name in green and a little crown and all that. And then sometimes I prioritize reading your comments. Like if I go back, let's see, what did it say? I know there was a members only comment back here from somebody. You can prop a door open, says Mode. Thanks to Brent for teaching that. Awesome. Yes, you can prop open a door. Definitely. Um let's see here. 
people just having good conversation. Love it. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to continue doing questions here. And then as I see more questions pop up in the chat from members, I will answer those. So, from Aziz, hi, Bob. Hope you're doing good. Can you provide information on the weather forecast in Canada? It's gonna be cold. So, we are going from double digits to single digits. So, what that means is when we're in double digits at this time of year, it means it's above like it's 10 degrees or above. So, it's rare for us to be in double digits. You understand what I mean? Like last night, it was 19 degrees at eight o'clock at night. That's rare to have double digits. Next week, we're going into single digits. So, next week, it'll be four or five or six degrees Celsius every day and most likely below zero at night. So, that's the weather forecast uh and it's supposed to rain today. So, we'll see if it's supposed to cool off and then rain today. Uh Peter and then I'll get down to the chat. Mr. Wise Bob last week I missed your live stream but it was fun. My question, what's the difference between renovation and invention? Have a nice day. If I don't like this part of my house, I can renovate it. I can do a renovation. I can rip out the windows and put bigger windows in and new carpet and paint the walls. I can do a renovation. It's when you take an existing part of a house or apartment and you basically make it like it's new again, okay? Invention is simply thinking of a new idea. Thinking of a new thing that could be built that people in the world would like. Whoa, I should get to the chat here. So, Natalia says, link, awesome. Amran says, you can say now, Bob, let me wind up my wires instead of let me wrap this lesson up. Yes, you can wind up your wires. Emily says, good evening, Bob. Mode says, I'm sorry but nothing beats a good old break. That's just a lie by corporate people. (laughs) Yeah, possibly. Kaka Chen, hi teacher. Do you have some suggestions of a graphic card? No, I just when I buy a computer, I look at what's the best video card or graphics card available and then I buy a computer with the graphics card that's like two levels cheaper than the best one. I never buy the best because that's quite pricey. Um let's see here. Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. I apologize for being late. Pas de problème. I don't have any questions so far. I just want to thank you for all the lessons. No problem. And Yaroslav says, I have never asked you before about your preferences in music. By the way, do you like American stand-up? Thanks. So, I listen to almost all types of music. I'm not a big fan of jazz but I will listen to rock, hip-hop, classic rock, popular music, um classical music, anything. For a while, I drove a lot for work. Uh, Years ago, I was a part-time teacher and I did tech support. So, I was on the road quite a bit and I remember going through every radio. After a year or two of that, I had listened to every kind of music. Uh so, I like I like most music. Sorry, if you're a jazz fan, I, I just it's hard for me to get into jazz. Uh let's see here. Natalia, Bob, a couple of weeks ago, you asked on Tuesday about our ideas for your future lessons. Have you read them? I have read a lot of them. Probably the biggest thing people have commented on is do more lessons in different places. Like so, that's why I did the lesson on the hike. There were a lot of requests for lessons in nature. Uh I haven't read all of them but I am working my way through. You'll know if I read yours because I will heart the comment but it's quite it's quite a list. I'm very very thankful. Thank you to all of you. Uh Amran says, will there be a study pack available for the lesson? Yes but not anytime soon. Probably this lesson won't have a study pack until next week. Um I'm not on track to get that done. Uh let's see. Automation secure home. Eugene from Etobicoke. I have vacation next month. We plan to go to Paris, Singapore, Phuket, Bangkok, Thailand, Hong Kong, London. That's a lot of traveling. Are you going to be on the mostly on the plane for three weeks? But anyways, I hope you have fun. Sorry, I didn't mean to make fun of your vacation, Eugene. That sounds awesome. Um and uh I'm sure you're doing a week here, a week there, a week there with plane rides in between. Uh let's see. Yaroslav's talking to Freddie. Mode says, I might be one of the few people who actually read the description and I'd like to say thanks for having us on your mind all the time. These strange topics always turn out to be super useful. Yes, 
I, you know, it, it's part of, so there's two things I've mentioned before that help me. One is just looking at what I do through the week or what I hear and then the other thing that helps me is if I think of common English words like this lesson, these are all very common words where I don't know the French word. Okay? So, if I don't know the French word for to prop up which I don't, um I'll take this lesson later and then I'll learn all the French words for all of these English words. Um so, that's two things that I use to measure it. It's like, hey, I use the word unbox, spin, unfold, fold up, retract. I use those words all the time and I don't know what they are in French. So, this will be a good lesson. Just don't know what to call it. Hafia's gasp, not a fan of jazz. No, but two of my children are which is rare for teenagers. Um Martin says, hello, Bob. Do you have any favorite tool to fix your house? So, I like having a good set of screwdrivers and I like having a good wrench and socket set. So, those are the two things that I like to have around the house and then of course, like a hammer and saw and those kinds of things. Wanda, hi, teacher Bob. Could you please explain again rip off? So, let's see here. I can rip off a corner of this piece of paper, right? Um the sign I showed had all phone numbers at the bottom and you could rip off or tear off one of those. So, it's basically if you have paper that the sound that you hear in the action is me ripping off or tearing off a little piece of paper. Uh let's see here. Hobart. Morning teacher. Do you have photo photovoltaic generation system on your farm so that you can get the free energy from the sun? No, but in my last members only video, I'm not sure Hobart if you remember, that's what I talked about. I talked about how I don't have solar panels and uh I read a couple of the con- uh, comments. I know know that has solar on his house um and I know that other people have commented on how with the size of my property, th- it'd be really easy to find a place to put them but maybe someday but not right now. Farms pay a little less for electricity in Ontario as well as a business. So, I have to at some point, it will become uh useful and I will do it. Michael says, sorry, I'm late. Lots of feed to deliver on a Friday. Ah, uh, yes. Delivering feed. Cool, Michael. Welcome. Uh let me get back to here. Henry. Hi, teacher Bob. Do you use portable tire pressure gauge to monitor your car tires regularly? How often do you check your tire pressure? Thank you. Well, my one van, my blue van has it built in so fancy. Right on the dash, it tells me if there's low tire pressure. My other van does not. So, I do regularly do a walk around. When you do a walk around of a vehicle, it means you just kind of look at it. So, probably every couple weeks or so, I just kind of walk around and look at the tires and you can kind of see if they're a bit low. The other thing is in Canada, we change our tires every six months. And so, when I take my van into the garage to put my snow tires on or to have my snow tires put on, they will check the pressure as well. But tires are pretty reliable in Canada. It's not often that you will have a leak. Uh let's see here. Vitor says, rip off or peel off or of a post-it. Oh, so yeah. If you have a post-it note, you would peel it off. Definitely. Uh key park. I will travel to the US to visit my daughter next month. I will be in the same time zone with Bob then. Oh, cool. So, if you are if you have time during your visit and watch a lesson, we will be in the same time zone. Uh people saying to you, hi, Michael. Hi, Amran. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> Everyone's saying hi. I love to see that. That's awesome. Um here we have pray for Gaza. How do you usually describe using things with these words? Yeah, definitely. Um like there's probably more words than just this like now that I think about it. Um I have done a lesson before on things in action which covered some of these things as well. Uh let's see here. From Kevin. 
Hi, I'm from China. This is my first time in this live stream. Thanks very much for the effort. This will help me a lot for practicing my English. No problem, Kevin. Good to have you here. Thanks to Amran for the super chat as well. Very nice of you. Uh and then from the chat mode, Ag says, it's interesting how Michael popped in the second you said the word farm. Yes, interesting. <laughs> Maybe he's monitoring the channel for things related to his job. But Kevin, yes, thank you. Uh you're very welcome, Kevin. Kevin Chen. Uh let's see here. From Daniel, hi, Mr. Bob. Have a nice day. I just wanna ask, do you like traveling? How often do you travel? Jen and I do not travel very often. We have of course, five children. Um they don't all live at home by the way. One's at university and one lives on his own. Um but we got used to when you have a lot of kids, you're home a lot and we like being home a lot. We will travel more in the future but right now, we are still um just enjoying being home. Plus, it's expensive to travel right now. I don't know if you've noticed. Our school is planning a trip to a European country. I don't wanna give too many details and the cost before COVID, it was it's almost double the cost to go on the trip since COVID. Um Mode says, you rip a page out of a book, right? Would you rip? Oh, sorry. There's a little heart in the way. Someone make a comment and bump both here. I'll do it. Uh, let's see. There's on my screen. I can't. Oh, there it is. Would you use rip off in that case? So, you rip a book, a page out of a book, right? Would you use rip off in that case? No, you would rip out. You would rip a page out. Definitely. Yep. Uh and if the book was three thousand dollars, you would say the book is a rip off but now I'm getting a little distracted <laughs> during the lesson. Uh let me make sure I answered that question. We'll get back to the lesson in just a moment. Um so from Nuboro, hi Bob. When you say you hook someone up with someone else, does it mean you refer someone to someone else with useful information? Yes. Now, you gotta be careful with hook up because hookup can also have a sexual connotation like when two people hook up, it means something different but if you say to someone, uh, I'll hook you up with a friend of mine. He does car repairs for really cheap. It means you're going to connect that person with the other person. Uh let's see here. Back to slides in a bit. Freddie Wolf says, solar panels are not allowed on the roofs of our houses in my village because of the historical monuments. Oh yeah, there are areas in Canada as well where we want to preserve what the buildings look like because they're beautiful. Ralph, traveling was fun for a few years for me. Traveled far too much for work. No, converted to 100% home sweet home lover. I don't think it will change again. That can happen. Like you can travel so much that you just enjoy being home. Tanya says, if you would come to the Netherlands or Germany, that would be awesome. Maybe someday, Tanya. Good to see you, by the way, Tanya. Um and uh let me get back to the lesson. Let's get this lesson wrapped up. Okay. So, members only chat. Let me turn that. I wish there was a bigger button for turning members only chat on and off and then we will get back to the slides. Slide. It's not weird. Let's get back to the slides and then the word is slide. So, these are slides. When you have a PowerPoint, you have slides um but you can also slide a door open. In uh my part of Canada, we call this a patio door. So, a patio door is like a large window but it can slide open and you can go in and out. So, often people will have a patio door that exits onto their patio or their deck. So, this person is using their patio door. They are sliding open. They've decided to slide open the door so that they can go outside. Yeah, we don't have a patio door. Um my parents built this house and I think when they built the house in the early 80s, patio doors weren't very energy efficient. So, we put in normal doors. The back of my house has a normal door. Zip and unzip. So, when you have something on that has a zipper, you can zip up or zip the zipper. When I put on my jacket, I can zip up the zipper or I can zip the zipper Uh, and then when I take it off, I unzip the zipper. 
Same with button. You can button up and unbutton a shirt. Uh same usage. Same way you can use it. Same way. You can use it in the same way. There we go. Uh spin. So, I don't know if you've ever done this but uh in the spring when I get my kids bikes ready to use, I will put them upside down and I will spin the tire just to make sure that it spins properly. I'll make sure the tire is straight. I will put a little bit of oil on the chain um and so when you spin something it's something that can turn and you've actively decided to make it turn. So you can turn a bike upside down and spin the tire. Um let's see what else can you spin? We have a game at school where you can spin the wheel and then it clicks and then you can win a prize. We use that in our classrooms sometimes. To box up and to unbox. So, if you move, you need to box up your stuff. You could say, I need to move. I need to put my stuff in boxes but most often people will say, ah, I have to help my brother move this weekend. I'm gonna go help him box up all his stuff. You could say, I'm going to go help him put all his stuff in boxes but that just seems like a long way to say to box up. When you move, you get a whole bunch of boxes. You box up your stuff. You can also say pack up your stuff um and then you move to your new place. When you get there, you unbox all your stuff or you unpack all your stuff. Unbox has become a popular word on the internet though. You might have watched channels where they unbox things or they might unbox um what's the big channel? Oh, Unbox Therapy. He's Canadian by the way. Unbox Therapy is a channel where he will unbox things. So, he gets new things and the act of opening and taking the thing out of the box is called unboxing. Um I kinda like those YouTube channels where they unbox stuff. Um maybe I should start unboxing things. Keep forgetting. Whenever I talk about this, I always forget. I want anyways, I'll I'll talk about it's a it's a secret. There. I'll tell you another time. To tighten, to loosen. So, when you tighten something, Usually, it's something like a bolt and nut. So, the bolt is the long piece. The nut is right here and you would use a wrench to tighten that nut. When I use my tripod, I tighten like if I move like if I do this, I can loosen. You can't see what I'm doing but I can loosen this and then put it in a different spot and then tighten it. So, there's a little handle and I can loosen it and then I can move the camera up and down and then when it's in the right spot, I can tighten it. So, whenever you do that um and I don't know if I've taught you this before. In English, we always say righty tighty lefty loosey. So, (laughs) it's kind of a funny little thing but what that means is if you turn something to the right, okay, it will get tighter. If you turn something to the left, it will get looser. So, righty tighty lefty Lucy. That's what that's how you remember which way to turn something. To wrap, Christmas is coming. Still a few months away. We will wrap a lot of presents when Christmas arrives so that our kids can uh, open those presents but uh when you wrap something, you put something around it. Maybe you make a sandwich in the morning and you wrap it in plastic wrap. Um maybe let me see another use of wrap wrap things. Yeah, those are probably the two biggest ones. You wrap a present. You can wrap your sandwich. I don't use plastic wrap on my sandwiches. If I make a lunch, I have a little reusable uh container that I take to school but yes, when I was a kid, my mom would wrap my sandwiches in wax paper, I think. Then I would eat them at school. (laughs) Plunge. Sometimes the toilet won't flush. Sometimes you need to unclog the toilet or you need to plunge the toilet. This thing that this person has is called a plunger. It uses you use it to kind of force air through the bottom of the toilet and that will unclog the toilet. So, someone might say, oh, the toilet upstairs isn't flushing. We need to plunge the toilet. So, unclog or plunge both words you can use and again, that is a plunger. Um you probably learned about that in my lesson on everyday items from a couple years ago. That was that was a while ago. To measure. 
So, when you want to build things, when you want to um put up curtains, when you want to put up blinds, you first you want to measure. You want to know how many centimeters wide is my window? How many inches is the window? Um if I was to buy new curtains for this room, I would want to measure the windows before I go and buy them. Um let me see something else you might measure. Um yeah, if you were going to build something out of wood, you would certainly measure things before you built them. Um but for sure, you uh use a tape measure or you use a ruler. I don't have a ruler here. This is a tape measure. You use a tape measure to measure things. Um or you might use a ruler which will be 30 centimeters long usually in Canada. Usually, a ruler in Canada is 12 inches long on one side and 30 centimeters long on the other side. It's the same length by the way or almost the same length but you would use that to measure things. Hey, that's the end of the formal part of the lesson. I'm gonna answer questions for a bit. I I haven't said hi to the 379 people watching. Hi. If you're new here, please click this subscribe button and you'll get notified the next time I do another English lesson. Um so, that was a lesson on using things or describing the action for using different things. Um I'll probably do a part two of this in a month or so when I uh, collect enough new words but uh we're gonna finish off uh the questions now. If you have a question, please ask it using the form and I will c- continue on. Let's see here. Kakachan. Hello, teacher Bob. Sometimes I'm attracted by something that looks beautiful but not useful to me at least and usually I will buy them. Do you have some suggestions? Are you trying to not do that? Oh, yeah. So, this doesn't always work for me but when I go shopping, when I go to buy groceries or when I go to buy clothes, I go to buy a specific thing and if I see something else I like, um I try not to buy it the first time I see it. I try to go home and think about it for a day or two. It doesn't always work. Sometimes I do the same as you. It's like, oh, this looks really cool. I will buy it but uh that would be my suggestion. Make a list. Go to the mall or the grocery store and buy the things on the list. If you see something else cool, just kinda take a picture of it or write it on the bottom of the list like something to think about and then go home and think about it. It doesn't always work. Uh so, this is from Filippo. I think it's hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Sorry I'm late. I'll watch and replay. My question today is, did you hear about the shooting in Brentstown? Yes, I texted Brent right away yesterday morning. I was very concerned and he was um yeah, I was just glad he was safe. So, I was driving yesterday morning and I stopped to text Brent. What did I say? I just said, is the shooting near you worried? And he's like, yeah, one and a half miles. Thanks for reaching out. So, yeah. So, thinking about Brent today, a very horrible thing that happened in Brent's town. By the way, Brent is uh Brent from Speak English American English with Brent um and that happened very very close to his house. So, so definitely thinking about Brent today. Pretty stressful stuff. Okay. From Min, how to distinguish informal words and formal words when you input a bunch of words? Yeah, that's tricky. So, you have to always learn words in context and practice them in context. So, um all of the words that I taught today, I try to use as many sentences as possible with the word in it so that you can hear how it's used. Like when I say my mom used to wrap my sandwiches in plastic wrap or you can wrap presents or you know, you tighten a bolt or nut by turning it right. Um yeah, you have to hear but then you need to use the words in context. So, go and write some sentences um using that word. Uh let's see here. From Natalia, when I put on a belt, do I tighten it? Yes. Or is the word tighten with a belt not necessary? No. So, I'm gonna put on a a belt. Um I'm gonna tighten my belt. Yeah, we often use tighten like you tighten your belt like if you don't let's say you're trying to lose weight and you've lost a few pounds then you can tighten your belt but I think in the morning, I just put on my pants and I put on my belt. I do, I would I don't always use tighten to me means you're going one 
notch further than you normally go. So, let's see here. Oh, that's it. We're done. Um, let's see. VTR, are you gonna warn Mr. Bob for swatting that fly? No warning today, he says. And then Brent is here. Brent did text me and say he was gonna hover and be here but he probably wouldn't be chatting much. So, it is good to see you, Brent. We are thinking about you. Um, and just uh, spending some time watching. So, American English with Brent is the new name of his channel. Brent says all is well. Thanks. Um, Armin says things are tempting me in the market always. Yes. And they know that. They know where to put. In my mind, they think let's put the chocolate at eye level where Bob walks in the grocery store. That's what I I always say. Uh anyways, folks, we're gonna wrap this up. Thanks for watching this lesson. Again, there's no study pack. This would be a great lesson for a study pack. I will make one at some point. Uh so, I'll put that on the community tab but uh it probably won't be this weekend. Actually, it won't be this weekend. So, don't wait for that. Um anyways, you can still visit the store. There are lots of study packs for other lessons if you're interested and thanks to all of you who have bought them. They're they're very popular. Very popular with English teachers um and I've gotten some really nice comments uh and some feedback on them as well. Uh by the way, if you ever find a mistake in a study pack, let me know and I'll I'll make a special I'll give you something for free. Let's say let's just say that. Um if you find a mistake, that's well worth my while. I try my best um to make sure that there are no mistakes but uh if you do find one, let me know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me say bye to I'm gonna go backwards here. Start at the bottom. Bye to Yaroslav, Mode Eggs, Lolly Lolly, Vitor, Natalia Illusion. Natalia Illusion, cool to see you. Um Sophia Key Park. Um Sophia says, thanks a lot for the lesson. It's a very useful topic and I'm going to repeat it. Awesome because there's a lot of words that I didn't know earlier. Yeah and and do know these are all common words. Th- these aren't like I don't make lessons where I go and find a whole bunch of obscure words that we don't use. These are all words that you will hear people use. Crank slide pin fold that every single word is like you give me a week and I'll probably hear most of these words somewhere. Bye to Brent. Again, Brent thinking of you down there uh and Jamie and then bye to Michael, Vitor, Omron, Chris, Hafiez, Filippo, uh Sam. Let me go to the bottom again here. Tanya, Judith, CS team, Martin, Ralph Filippo. I'm saying names twice now. So, anyways, time to go. Have a great day, everybody. I'm gonna go do some professional development. That means I'm gonna learn how to be a better teacher. That's the plan. Anyways, this was fun. Have a good day. Bye.